<laughs> Welcome back. This is Victoria of Women's Issues, Women's Voices. And this evening, if you're just tuning in, I am here with my co-collaborator, Corey Laker Frazier. And this is the Goddess Hour. The Goddess Hour is a program that we are creating together that will air on most of the last Fridays of the month. We like to give ourselves a little buffer just in case, you know, we're not able to do exactly that, but you can expect us the last Friday of the month. And welcome. This is our first Friday show. Welcome to our new time slot. Um, the beautiful music that we had in the, uh, in, in the break um, was Joni Mitchell uh, singing a cover of the Crosby Still Nash song I already forgot the name. We are, we are, we are stardust. <laughs> I had always called that song back to the garden, which brings us back to our topic tonight that we've been talking about uh, turtle woman energy, turtles, how we can uh, be more in connection and relationship with the land that we live on. Even if it's, we're talking about our yard, right? In a, in a uh, subdivision how we can make it more turtle friendly, which also makes it more human friendly in my humble opinion. Um, so we are now going to talk a little bit about uh, moss and lotus, because moss and lotus are both are, are a plants are plants that really live between <laughs> earth and water, just like the turtle. And so you had a little story that you wanted to, oh, to tie turtle and moss and to lead me yeah. into my... So after we found those turtles, um, my daughter got really excited about the place where we found them. So she kind of created her own garden back there. And she's been collecting moss from other places in the yard and like placing it down on the ground for the turtles and it was it so that as we were putting the show together it just sounded like it would just go perfectly moss and turtles and it's so it's such a wonderful image i um, mean the compassion that your daughter has that you're tending to in her in her like in her soul yeah that that she's um you know okay what is soft that I could put there that would make a turtle's life easier. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so that's- And she a, knew where the moss was in the yard and she went and got it and made this intentional effort to like lay it down for the turtles. Yeah. yeah. And if, you know, listener, if you are someone who has never had the opportunity to lay on a bed of moss or to lay a part of your body on a bed of moss, it's extremely soft. Mm -hmm. And that's because it's a non-vascular plant. So it doesn't have the plumbing in it <laughs> that plants like grass that have uh, a root system, um, trees, bushes, most of the plants that we, that we think of. Um, moss actually doesn't have a root system. And so it's the, the water that it takes in, it really absorbs through its whole its whole body, um, which is what makes it so incredibly soft, is that the whole, it, it's, uh, its entire being is about receiving the, the, the suppleness of water, which is, I think is pretty exciting. And if I sound like I'm like getting up on my soapbox because I'm, I'm like the, the, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the person promoting moss. Um, anyone who knows me knows that last summer I had the opportunity to take a series of workshops that were about moving like moss, moving at the speed of moss, moving with more connection to moss. Um, and that, uh, that class was offered by um, a professor of mine from the Laban Institute, Institute named Andre Heinge, I think is how you pronounce her last name. But she's part of this thing in New York City called the Environmental Performance Agency. 
And so if any of this that we're that I'm talking about right now kind of excites you, you can check that out on the web. It's the environmentalperformanceagency.com. Um, and, and basically they are bringing back connection to the environment, to the land, to people who live in very dense places like New York City. And um, so she offered this class. And so I'm gonna invite you to consider if wherever you're listening to this, where you might have seen moss. Often it's when we're in the woods or we're hiking on a shaded trail. This is again, what brings it into relationship with turtle. It also likes the shade and it likes the rich soil. Um, but what she brought to my attention is that moss also grows in any and every nook and cranny, even in the most uh, populated, densely populated area like uh, you know, Brooklyn, New York. If you let yourself um, look out for it, moss is everywhere. Um, it's the oldest plant on this planet. It's over 470 million years old. Um, the amazing thing about moss is we often see it. And like when you're saying, you know, your daughter pulling this up, it's like, a, it's almost like, like what we we're saying with the, with the sod. It's almost like a piece of sod. That's what it looks like to us. And actually it's similar because Moss is ever is like little strands of flat of uh, of grass. Each one of those little pieces, uh, a square inch of moss is like hundreds of blades of this little plant, um, and that little plant cannot survive on its own. So that's one of the wonderful things about moss is that it uh, invites us to get low to the ground. Um, it can go without water for, I've read, up to more than 19 years. So if you see moss somewhere and it is brown and gray and it looks like it's just desiccated, give it some water. And moss embodies resiliency because what it does is it absorbs the water through much like actually like the tissues of our mouth because it's very soft, absorbs the water and spreads it as much as it can through the plant. And within sometimes within hours, that plant will have returned back to a vibrant green, um, even if it's been dried for you know a couple of decades. Um, so it 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 embodies this this idea of acceptance and patience and being open to nurturing, being open to nourishment. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very much about interdependency because with, like I said, if you take off one of those little pieces of moss, you can give it water and it can hold it for a brief time, but then it's gonna uh, evaporate and it's gonna dry up. But when it's a group of them so tightly knit together, they actually are then uh, reserving that water for each other, conserving it, shading. Um, and then the, the amazing thing that they have found out about moss is that even though it doesn't have a root system, which is often what we think of like plants that land on the rock and they grow into the rock and then they push the rock apart. Um, moss actually grinds down what is underneath it and, and uh, That's the coolest thing. transforms the, the it, it, this is that it's, moss is persistent. Like it's, so it's been around 470 million years. Um, it's uh, sturdy. It'll wait till the next rain or the next fog or the next dew, it'll absorb that up. Um, it can only reproduce when it, there's moisture, um, but that it's just like the whole time, it's like breaking down the soil under it and, and helping break uh, the rock mineral 
so that then it's usable by the plant and usable by the other plants that are that are with it. Um, yeah, I, so I'm just I'm in love with moss. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and so like the turtle, I mean, it's when the turtle lives on land, but it still needs it still needs the water, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So listener, I'm going to invite you to let yourself take a moment. <sighs> take a breath or two. Let 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 a breath or two happen. Don't take it. Wait, let it happen. <sighs> and I'm going to read a poem that um, that I discovered just recently in in cleaning and packing um, that I wrote in September of 2009. So it's been here for a while. That's a really great poem to transition us from moss to lotus. So I'm going to invite you to let yourself be like moss. <sighs> Accept whatever shape is the ground under you, whether you're sitting or lying down. And again, if you're driving a car, we this is not really meditative, but we ask you to not lose uh, consciousness of what you are doing. Just let yourself imagine the resistancy and the resiliency and the persistency of moss and how that might be valuable for you. And this poem is called To Touch. To touch full palmed a basic truth, one so sound and obvious that it was invisible, unspoken or at least mostly hidden, is awesome, awe-filled, awe-inspiring, awful. Sitting in the cup of the lotus, floating on the waters of my own life, seeing the rippling pools stretching from me and to me, sparkling, buoying me, to be rooted in water like the lotus, such beauty created from such S-H-I-T. It isn't where I'm going. It isn't how I got here. It really is just this moment, breathing in to the next. Thank you, Victoria of the past. Mm -hmm. And so Corey, tell us about Lotus. I like that poem with breathing from one breath to the next. It's like a blanket of mm. moss. <laughs> like the moss, yeah. 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 But um, you think about the breath, it's not just one breath that sustains us. Yeah. It's the weaving of every inhale, every exhale, like all yeah. together. Yeah. <sighs> I'm glad you found that for this show. I believe I totally it, serendipitously. Yeah, well, I think I, there was a, a hand of, you know, of the goddess. <laughs> yeah. So now take us into the water. Well, so mm -hmm. ju just like w turtles need water and land, lotus lives in this lotus plants live in the same places that turtle live right along the edges of the water um, usually in the shallow water they only need about 12 inches of water to grow in so if you see lotus flowers or lotus plants growing around the water you know that that's probably some weightable water to be in so long as you don't step on a turtle <laughs> and also just to be clear, if you're someone here in Columbia or even in St. Louis at uh, Tower Grove Park, they have the most incredible, what I always thought were lotuses, but are actually water lilies. They're similar plants, but different. Yeah, a, I've a always... water lily needs like two to five feet. So, right. So be sure you know that you're, 
you're waiting with a lotus and not a water lily because it could get deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. also a prehistoric plant. Mm -hmm. It seeds can survive for thousands of years without water. And it uh, goes back about 250 million years. Um, lotus roots, like Victoria said, thrive in the mud. And then it sends out every morning, it sends out this, well, when, when, the, when it's ready to bloom, it sends out this blossom from the mud up to the, up to the sky through the water. And then every night, it, and then it blossoms during the day. And then every night it closes and then retreats down, back down under the water to the mud. And then every morning it comes back up and it's clean. It's not like a muddy flower. It's a clean flower. So um, that kind of represents like the three faces of the goddess, like morning, like maiden, mother, crone, and morning. Help me, help me make this connection. <laughs> well, so like, it's, so it yeah, comes... So it's like the the it's beginning. born yes mm -hmm. it's born up out of the water and then it's like it's the full flower that holds and this is where we're we're starting yes. to shift in like holds the goddess kuan yin holds those of us who believe in the divine mother we sit in the the flower in the like that is the mother yeah and then as it as evening comes and it closes and it goes back down it's like it has a death mm -hmm right and so it's crone and it's in, and crone is in the darkness of the water until it's born again in the next morning yeah. yeah for about two or three weeks i think is about how long yeah the the uh lotus or maybe longer i'm trying to remember now because i read that whether it was shorter or longer um yeah well it sounds oh i know what it was that that the lotus flower doesn't bloom as long as the water lily it blooms less than two weeks, but the difference is, is that it, it sends a seed pot up that you then can see above the water line that stays there for, for, for a long time. That's, that's the that's, lily? That's the, that's the lotus, oh, okay. the seed pod. And that's the, so that seed pod, if the, the waters recede and it's dry, that seed pod is just sitting there waiting until that pool gets filled with water again. Yeah. So that then it can drop those seeds so that the cycle can start again. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, they're highly adaptable and cleansing for the water. They're res like we've talked about resilience. They're also resourceful. They take, they clean the water and turn the, the muck into nourishment for themselves. Yes. Um, and, and, that's, and that muck is literally made up of decomposed dead feces fish feces i mean all of that yeah it's not the pleasant stuff it's the <laughs> yeah, like the pollen that flies in from the yeah. from the trees and yeah and and in asian culture the lotus flower is considered to be the most sacred flower because of this because of all the symbolism around it with the birth and rebirth and dying every and night death, yeah. yeah yeah and uh so so it's only natural that kuan yin would be sitting on top of a lotus flower in yeah. many pictures yeah and so listeners i'm going to tell you that when my, my dear friend Corey said oh the next goddess that we should talk about is kuan yin inside of me i literally was like ugh and so I have had a history of, of really not feeling in resonance with Kuan Yin. And it's because I've read too many stories in which I have felt that Kuan Yin has been presented as the all giving, um, that like the compassion to the point of harming herself. Um, there was a story that had a very profound effect on me about where and I haven't been able to find the story again, but 
in, in compassion for a blind man, she gouges her own eyes out, right? And I was just like, okay, I want nothing of that. That's not the kind of compassion I want. And so if you heard the first half, um, really it's been in the process of, of uh, exploring this with Corey to present to you that my own, it's like, <laughs> I even feel like, like that, that my own um, uh, connection with Kuan Yin down there in the muck and the ugh, and the resistance um, has had the opportunity because of uh, what we talked about in this very first part of, you know, letting myself be connected to and open to this idea of not an imposed compassion, not a full, not a caretaking compassion that depletes me or completes whoever is. Uh, being inspired by Kuan Yin, but the kind of compassion that actually nourishes both the garden and the gardener. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so Kuan Yin is the goddess that we're going to be exploring in our July show more deeply. Um, but today she's coming up out of the waters <laughs> <laughs> right on her you, on her lotus on flower. her lotus flower right coming up and that's that's the image that i really like to share when i have talked about the lotus and now i can add kuan yin to this is like the lotus doesn't grow out of happy sparkly sunlight it grows out of the yuck of our life that's what nourishes it and yet it doesn't stay there it reaches up through the water, up towards the sun, up towards the air, and it's grounded down in that. It's kind of like the tree of life work that Corey and I do together, right? It's like the roots. It's, it's rooted down in all the experiences of our life, even the ones that have been really difficult and have felt like, you know, the, the word that I can't say on the radio, right? And <laughs> well, you know, yeah. when you think about it, everything grows up from the muck. There's nothing that grows out of cleanliness. Like everything grows from, but, bro, but from death, everything, yeah. it's part of the life cycle. But I think that we tend to see things like the lotus and the water lily, and we see it floating on the top of this, you know, clear, clean pool. And we have this idea of, of it really being all sunlight and pink and, you know, beautiful. And yet, yeah. But, but, and that is true. That is true. And it's also rooted in darkness. And, and, you know, and if we're taking that into human, into the things that have caused us sadness and anger and fear, and it's transformed. That's why, I mean, that's why it's so amazing that the, that the lotus and Kuan Yin actually transform the water from mucky and help it become clearer. And if we're looking at that in a symbolic way, it's like being able to transform the emotions that are uh, dense into something lighter, you know, right? Yeah. <sighs> so we have a minute. And accepting, yeah. accepting mm -hmm. the past, the muck, mm -hmm. and yeah, reaching, yeah. reaching for brightness so that's the imagery that we're going to be holding in our lives in this next month is Kuan Yin sitting on a lotus flower the beauty of the lotus flower the beautiful petals uh embracing her sitting on a pond also she's holding a container she's some a lot of times you see her holding a vase so well, we, we should be checking into that for next time we'll, we'll be checking into that right? for next. and the other yeah. little thing we'll drop in is we are using the pronoun she but Kuan Yin is not a uh single sexed deity Kuan Yin can transform herself she yeah. can, she lives within the gender spectrum I'm excited to talk about that. I'm excited to talk about that too. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. This is Women's Issues, Women's Voices. This is Victoria, and I'm with my friend Corey. And we do the Goddess Hour on most 
final, most fourth Fridays of, is it the fourth Friday or the last Friday of the month? Oh, I, I don't know. It's the last Friday. I, I, we'll just make the it the last Friday. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've never had to Friday. decide that before, but the last Friday of the month. And if you want to know more about us, you can find us on Facebook at Women's Issues, Women's Voices. You can also write to us at WIWV at KOPN.org. Happy summer, everyone. Happy summer. <laughs>